excited to have Emily, the arthritis foodie today on the Arthritis Life podcast. Welcome. Hi, Cheryl. Thanks so much for having me. Oh my gosh, I wanted to do this for so long, but getting a date in the diary has been, yes. <laughs> has been so hard. <laughs> oh, I'm so but glad it that. worked out. Yeah, with the time <laughs> difference and everything. Yeah. yeah. So can you just give the listeners a quick introduction? You know, where do you live and what is your relationship to arthritis? Of course. Yeah. So my name is Emily, also known as Arthritis Foodie. I live in the UK, in London. I'm originally actually from Yorkshire, which is a bit further up north. <laughs> um, I run an Instagram account called Arthritis Foodie, which I started back in 2018, having lived with arthritis for about five years back then. I've now lived with it for about eight years. And I've written a book called Beat Arthritis Naturally, so for everything you can do alongside your medication to feel better, feel well every day and sort of empower you in, in living well with arthritis. Um, much, much like what, arth what Arthritis Life does, I guess, as well, what you do in terms of empowering people and making people feel good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Very, very congruent. And um, I'm, I, I'm not the best foodie, though. I love eating, but I'm not the best um chef I'm, I'm a work in Aww. progress there but you you post amazing things about you know uh, recipes that are anti-inflammatory and you explain you know I know in the book how certain foods can affect our our overall you know inflammation level and our sense yeah. of you know well-being and but before we dive into the book I, I want to make sure to um <laughs> ask more about yes yes visual aids this is what it looks like <laughs> yes if you're watching on on a video um but I would love to know a little bit about you said you got diagnosed um five years before 2018 so 2012 I can't do math. Well, I got, yeah, 2013. Yeah, 2013 is when it started. Um, yeah. But it was actually, it was actually it took about nearly two years to get a diagnosis. I say it started in 2013, because that's when I got the first symptoms. Mm. But the actual diagnosis took, oh my gosh, yeah, it took nearly two years to get to get that diagnosis. Unfortunately, I mean, it's quite a long process, as I'm sure you're aware of having spoken yeah. with so many wonderful people on your podcast. And, you know, having the experience yourself, it takes a while to get to get the diagnosis. Yeah. 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 Can you tell a little more about like, what were your first symptoms and what was your experience with your diagnosis, quote unquote, journey or saga, as I sometimes yeah. call it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Cheryl. So for me, gosh, I mean, it's, it was an accumulation of things, but effectively I was working really hard as a tutor in Italy, um, working all hours, God sends. I got a really bad cold um, and my one of my fingers started to swell while I was whilst I was in Italy and I thought it was just the the heat and um, even though it actually wasn't even that hot in Italy at the time it was September so it wasn't even that warm um anyway and I thought oh well, that's strange okay and I started sneezing and being feeling a bit run down and I thought okay it's fine I, you know I'm sure it's, it'll pass it might be hay fever because we were in the countryside as well in, in Italy anyway so I get back home I start my third year of university and it's freshers week and the symptoms get even worse. I, I'm really struggling to stay awake. I'm sleeping all hours of the day, pretty much. I'm getting through, you know, those boxes of tissues. I'd, I'd go through like three in a day just because I was sneezing so much. Um, wow. Yeah, it was really hard. Um, I had to miss lectures. And, and because it was fresh as week as well, and I was trying to socialize and, you know, make friends actually with the, with the flatmates that I'd moved in with because, the girls that I lived with in the year before they'd moved away so I was, I was really trying to also be sociable in that time and trying to attend things I was just really unwell but pushing myself during that week and I went to the doctors and they were like you've, you've got freshest flu um don't worry it's gonna pass and I was like no but I've had these symptoms for a while now I don't feel right and anyway over the, as the weeks progressed I just felt worse and worse and worse and I couldn't move my hands you know they were really stiff they were swollen my thumbs were absolute I was just in absolute agony I felt really unwell really fatigued and in the end I actually ended up taking about six weeks two months off university I ended up going home my mum picked me up from university and I went to live with her for a bit and I just said to my my lecturers and my tutors I can't I just I can't come in I'm really unwell um got back and I still didn't feel right but I went to A&E I went to a GP I, I still kept trying to get answers um and again you know <laughs> so many you know I think someone was like, oh it's an it's an infection from 
uh, sexually transmitted disease. I was like, what? I've not even like, well, I've not even been, <laughs> you know, sexually active. Enough. How is that a thing? I was like, they were throwing everything at me that they would throw at a student, um, a typical student, I suppose. Um, but none of it was was, you know, and it just wasn't true. Um, and so, yeah, so I, there was one day that I took my flatmate to the a, to a &E with me because I was just so desperate. Uh, and she came with me to a and &E and they sent me home. They were like, sorry, we don't know what this spelling's about. You're gonna have to go back to your GP. It was just, it was just a constant not knowing. And, and, and actually the not knowing is really upsetting and, and actually mentally tolling as well, because you don't have a name to it. You don't know how to look after it. You don't have to take care of yourself. You don't know, there's no medicine for it. So you just think, oh my gosh, when is this gonna end? You know, it took a long time to get that diagnosis. So it was really tough. Um, Oh, yeah, I I'm totally going off on a tangent now. Oh no, no, no! <laughs> but I, I always tell people the uncertainty. Yeah, being undiagnosed was by far the hardest part yeah. for me. Was yeah, definitely. And, and just for the audience that might be listening from the United States, is A and E this? I always forget. Is that emergency department? Yes, accident okay. and, yeah, accident and emergency. Because okay. I just didn't know what to do. I yeah. I was with my my. I've got all my bless my housemate at the time, Charlie. Um, she was so sweet. She, she kept writing down because I couldn't write because my hands were just a bit of a mess. She kept writing down everything that was happening to me so that we, so we had this record and we took that in, to the hospital when, the, when I literally was like, Charlie, I don't know what to do. And I was crying and she was like, I'll come with you to A&E. So, you know, that happened. But she, was, she was so, so sweet. Um, and yeah, I just was, it was a really miserable time. Really, 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 really miserable time. Um, and it was only when I went back home saw the GP with my mum um and I think when you have someone with you it's it's it almost takes the emotion away from it because they can objectively help you in that time and I often say to people if you if you are struggling take someone with you in in the appointment when you're having the appointment because they can ask the questions that you might forget or miss because you're so upset and and so in the emotion of of, of what's happening to your body effectively so um so she came with me and then that got me to a referral to um the rheumatology department at a, a, a town that I grew up in called Retford Hospital I got a referral there to a rheumatologist there and he was like look you you've got inflammatory arthritis it's going to last a year um let's start you on this medication and it kind of went from there but it didn't last a year <laughs> um and I think I've got this you know it's for life which is you know which is fine and I've come to terms with that but um, from then it was like, okay, at least I know what I'm dealing with now. Um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, I, I didn't realize we were both diagnosed. Like I, it was my, between my third and fourth year of university that I got Aww. diagnosed and I had the same thing. I took my mom with me to appointments, oh, yeah, but then so tough. one of my, one of the specialists I went to was gastrointestinal because I had lost weight and lost a lot of muscle mass too, but like, Aww. um, and I couldn't eat. Like I had something we didn't know yet called gastroparesis, which it's not super common with rheumatoid arthritis necessarily, but it's, it just basically is delayed gastric emptying. So like every time I would eat, I would just feel like I had like a bowling ball in my stomach. I would be super bloated. Oh, yeah. It was awful. Oh, and then, you. but they said what they said that gastroenterologist first said is literally they accused me of being like too close to my mom. Like, I don't even what? know. But I'm sorry. Like, are you a psychiatrist? I'm like, no. first of all, like I'm no. in pain and I can't eat and you're and then they, they also called my parents and said but we also think she probably just has an eating disorder and she's just faking and like that she's uh, actually well I got sick. the I got the gas got the gaslighting to the sort of like you know <laughs> I mean I literally he was like oh you know I think I think you know you probably need some help um in terms of your mental well-being you've obviously taken too much too much on at university because I am a type A person I still was doing that me too volunteering and doing like you know um volunteering in a primary school dance society um I was also a student representative I was doing those things alongside my degree, degree in the lead up to, to having my having um, my symptoms and he was like look I just think you need to step back you know um you've taken too much on um etc cetera, etc cetera. and I was like no no look at my hands look at my hands please you have to do something and that that's when he was like okay right we'll give you an ultrasound and they saw the fluid in my joints and they were like this is classed as severe um wow. but I also it's so interesting about the um about your gut health because actually I've missed a, a whole step actually at the beginning where I actually had food poisoning 
I had food poisoning um, Mm -hmm. right before going to Italy. I had food food poisoning for about, yeah, symptoms that lasted for about two weeks. Um, Really bad. I know, sorry to anyone who this might have, but really bad diarrhea, really, really bad. um, And that lasted for two weeks and it just didn't get any. I mean, it just kind of pretty much was not normal for a few years, actually. Um, And so, yeah, so that's, that's also quite an interesting gut health, immune health and how that's connected. And I talk a lot about that in my book as well, but that's, that is what I say sort of triggered everything. Um, you know, your, your genetics hold the bullets and your environment pulls the trigger is, is what I say in the book. You know, it's, I was susceptible to having this um, and it was just an accumulation of things. You know, I was stressed, I hadn't had much sleep. I got food poisoning and my body was just like, whoa. <laughs> um, Yes, yeah, I didn't know. Yourself. <laughs> well, that's so funny because like, I started having these symptoms, but mine were not. I only had one joint that hurt, so that's why no one was thinking rheumatology. And again, I don't yes, blame yes, them the, because I didn't. I only was, had, it was only this finger that hurt first. Yeah, I saw your picture of that. Yeah, yeah. So I basically, I, I knew the day I knew I was better was when I could put this ring back on. Wow. Um, which I never thought would happen by the way I thought I'd just have to look uh, yeah but I, I couldn't literally used to go about that far oh, wow. and I couldn't get it on um yeah. so yeah it started in that finger and then it moved to my thumbs and then to this finger um mm. but it was like you said that's so interesting that you you started with one finger because I did as well it started with one finger and then it was over the course of months that, and weeks that it spread elsewhere well, and then I also got food poisoning. This is so weird. But yes, I know oh that, my yeah, gosh, it's but, mad, isn't it? It's yeah, so, and I know yeah. that there are like documented theories of, you know, autoimmune disease getting triggered by a viral mm-hmm. and infection. Mm-hmm. But I'd already had these like pre-symptoms of the one swollen finger for like two years. And then the food poisoning was like, that was the gun that just shot off because it was like then every single joint after the food poisoning hurt. But yes, yeah, so- Aww. Anyway, yeah, our stories are just are fascinating. I think. Very similar. Yeah. And I've had a lot of yeah. I've had a lot of messages from people uh, you know, through the mm-hmm. community, you know, that we have online that yeah, that they've had this, this sort of similar experience even since the book has come out. Because I talk about my journey in, in the first chapter, I think. Um, I have a lot of people reach out to me and go, This is so similar to what's happened to me. So it's so interesting that it's also similar to you as well, Cheryl. That's mm-hmm. yeah. Well, oh. and so no, totally. And and uh, in terms of just going a little bit chronologically. So mm-hmm. after you finally get your diagnosis, um, you know, what were some of the treatment approaches that you've, that you tried over the years? Um, and we're, you know, speaking as my medical disclaimer says, you know, speaking just about your story, not necessarily yeah. telling anyone else that this medication will or won't work for them, but you know, how I'm curious, like how your treatment journey evolved. Cause I know that you then ended up experimenting with a lot of other, other yeah. like tons of different tools in your toolbox that led you to the creating the book. I think not to yeah, put words in your absolutely. mouth. <laughs> no, of course. Yeah, no, no, that's exactly right. So gosh, I, yeah, I tried so many different things. I think they started me on the proxen. Um, I also had steroid injections, uh, for the pain and for the inflammation to get my inflammation levels down. Um, sulfasalazine, methotrexate, tablet form, methotrexate injection form, and Humira Biologics. Um, and what's worked for me the best is the combination of methotrexate with Humira. Um, but at one point, nothing was working, like nothing was working. So I just, I felt really low and sort of like, oh my gosh, is there nothing I can do sort of thing? Because I'd, for, for years, I, it's so interesting that I actually I'm arthritis foodie, but for years I was like, I don't have arthritis. I'm fine. No one needs to know about it. I'll I'll carry on as I am. I'll try and do my best. You know, I don't want to be um, judged for having this. Not that not that I judge anybody, but I was judging myself almost. Like, oh, I just want to be a normal young person and and not have to deal with this. And um, so for, I think for a long time I sort of was like, oh, I'll just let the medicine do its thing. I don't need to worry about this. I can live my life. I can do what I want um, and I can just ignore it. And, and it's up to the rheumatologist to sort it out kind of thing. But then in 2018, I was just, I hit rock bottom basically in, in terms of my pain. I, um, it had spread to my left knee, my ankles, my elbows. 
um and I like woke up in I was on holiday with my friend and like woke up and like my arm was bent and I couldn't stretch it and she was like oh and maybe you just slept funny and I was like no I like knew I knew what was happening and I mean it's I mean it's loads better now (laughs) but I literally couldn't I couldn't straighten my arm I was like I can't straighten my arm I was so upset um and so I came back from that holiday and I was like I've got to do something I've got to try and and my friends who I worked with in the office they were like um have you looked into food for your for your arthritis have you um researched and I was like oh you know what's it gonna do really and then they were like is there any harm in it is there any harm in trying I was like probably not um so (laughs) I went on Instagram and went online and tried to find someone blogging about food and arthritis and I just I couldn't really find anyone that I could relate to um that was posting just food um and arthritis so I I was like okay I've maybe I'll start like talking about it and doing a diary and um had no idea it would lead to any of this <laughs> um it just started out sort of posting pictures of my food anonymously um for about eight months anonymously and then as the page grew and people were sort of asking me what I've been doing to help myself and and I did start to feel better in myself uh, having changed my diet um you know having changed sort of my behavior around sleep stress everything like that and and did, was it all yeah. self-taught so you learned like did you learn just through looking at other people's websites like what even like how did you even get yeah. started because I get I always say tell people it's very normal to be overwhelmed when you look at so diet for arthritis oh my gosh it's You're, so overwhelming like what yeah. does everyone so, agree the only thing everyone agrees on is like not processed food you know and yeah. more oh, plant, 100%. you know plant whole based. food based whole foods plant based. but then yeah. what is yeah. anything more than that it's like it feels like I just get confused so yeah yeah 100 percent. and and so for me yeah, it was a lot of a lot of self-taught I mean I was like a dog with a bone like I was like I'm gonna find out what to do with this like I, I just wouldn't let it go so I was looking absolutely into everything like everything you've heard of in terms of arthritis diets like I've looked into it you know I've I've really I really really have and um I was following people like uh, the Dr. Kitchen um Dr. Jenna Machocki um their content's amazing plant power doctor um you know I speak about all these people in the book as well and just sort of going god this gosh it really is like a connection between the immune system and the gut and you know chronic illness it's, it, there's got to be something in this so I just yeah, I guess it was all kind of self-taught and researching off the back of, of that. And then I had some messages of people going, you know, like you said, where have you found this information? And I couldn't point them in any direction because it was all over the place. You know, it was books on my shelf, you know, on my shelves. It was tabs on my website, you know, on my browser. It was notes in a book, like it was all over the place. Um, so I thought, okay, well, you know, do you know what? Actually, there isn't anything on the market that is you know what I would have wanted at 20 years old not knowing where that to, where to turn what to do so yeah basically this is this is the book that I wish I'd had at the start of my journey and it's everything everything you could possibly want to know about living with arthritis including a whole chapter on all the different types of arthritis and all the different types of medications and pain relief and everything like that it's, it's you know it's a real holistic look at the whole picture it's not going you know use this book and you'll be cured it's absolutely not that at all it's Right. This is a way to live with arthritis, you know, and, and you take what you want from it and what works for you, because as you said about the medical disclaimer, sorry, that was my USA flag just there. That's okay. The sound there. <laughs> um, as you said in your, your medicine disclaimer, you know, what works for one person might not work for another. And it's the same with diet and lifestyle and food. And you've got to figure it out for yourself, which is. Yeah, it can be like, oh, God, can't someone just do it for me? But actually. The, the, the empowerment you get of going no I'm doing this for myself I'm taking care of myself is so powerful um so yeah <laughs> yeah no I can't even remember what you asked me now but no 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 that, that's how this podcast goes yeah I, I love it no it, it actually you wove it in you know really nicely that you that you kind of a lot of us end up doing trial and error on our own bodies yeah. and you know almost become yeah. like um, a scientist about your body and say, what happens, yeah. you know, and with, if this, like in, if, for example, for me, one of my strongest, most reliable triggers for fatigue is sunlight or heat 
both one or the other, but oh. worst together, which is more common in lupus, but it can happen in rheumatoid arthritis where you're really sensitive, you know, and you just Gosh. have to, I kind of learned, wait a minute. I just feel like I, 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 at a certain point, I just can't tolerate sun, you know, so I have to be in the shade, um, or, um, you know, there's obviously other ones like, you know, people need to learn, like can learn that stress really triggers their inflammation. Yeah, so learning really that, okay, me. Yeah. me too. I, I was so, in, yeah. I had this denial period. Like you were saying earlier, you kind of had a little, I mean, I don't want to put the word denial in your mouth, but you were saying that you were like, Oh, I don't really have arthritis. <laughs> Yeah. That's, I was like, what is this? No, that's not, <laughs> yeah. well, especially when you're young, it's hard. Yeah, and, it's and really hard. you know, so I think, I think, you know, something I wanted to just bring up about the book, I don't want people to be, if, 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 I'll, okay, let me just start the sentence again <laughs> about, okay, okay, you know, the, the title of the book is beat arthritis naturally. And I, if you've listened to this podcast before, you know, that I'm very much like, you know, about balancing, you know, whatever works for you and getting the advice of your providers and combining, you know, every tool in your toolbox that might work, you know, Western medicine and natural methods. And I think I just want to say it for the, for anyone listening that, you know, the word natural is sometimes confusing to people, you know, that they think yeah. if I say beat arthritis naturally, it means only natural methods, but they put that word only in there, you know? And so yeah, like yeah. you're very clear in all of your materials that this very is clear. Not, <laughs> yeah. And your own yeah. personal journey that you combine. I, so it's a both and not an either or approach. Yeah, abs absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This is, this is, this is everything you can do alongside, you know, it's all the things that you don't, yeah, you don't have to Google because <laughs> it's in here, you know, all the things that you're not sure about. Um, and yeah, absolutely. The combined approach has, has been the best for me. And, you know, I've actually had, had, yeah, had such positive sort of outcomes from it and understanding my body, like you said about stress, that's a huge trigger for me. Dairy is a huge trigger for me. Mm. Um, you know, and discovering that has been so helpful, you know, to the, even fried foods actually, um, oh. when I first started this journey, I was, I was tracking everything and, um, I had fried foods in the day after like my, my finger swells. And I was like, well, mm. that's so obvious. That's the only thing that's, you know, I wasn't stressed and I was out with my friends. So it wasn't, that's the only thing. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it is knowing your body and understanding your body and absolutely finding what, what works for you. And, and do you know what, also not, um, shaming anyone either way you yes. know if you want to go fully fully medicine fine absolutely do it if that's what if that if that's what works for you if you want to go fully natural fine if that's what works for you but for me a balance of being in between both and knowing what works for me is is just yeah it's been life-changing to be honest with you <laughs> it yeah. really has yeah. And earlier you, you mentioned that, you know, you got, you had a kind of an eclectic set of resources that you use to find the information about diet and, and, um, stress and, and lifestyle and sleep. And I just, I want to make sure people know that you have citations throughout the book and experts oh gosh, that yes. have medically reviewed. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go to the back of the book, I can show you on video, but if you, if you're um, listening, if you're listening, you can probably hear the pages moving, but this is all research. Um, thousands of research papers that I put in, into this. Um, and yeah. also, yeah, got it signed off by a rheumatologist as well um you know to make sure that uh, you know the content is right and I'm not <laughs> you know I'm not a doctor I'm not a rheumatologist yeah. I'm, I'm coming from a patient perspective so I got it signed off by a rheumatologist as well um and that's so yeah. <laughs> yeah that is because I mean there, unfortunately there are a lot of people that try to like quote unquote do their own research but they don't have the medical literacy to kind of understand how to sift through like mm -hmm. kind of too good to be true claims or claims that are based on evidence versus not. So it is such an important tool or such an important service to have somebody who said, look, I've gone through this like with a rheumatologist and with other experts and combining the power of my own personal journey and story and then put together this resource for people. I think that's just, yeah. What's, it's great. And can you, can you ex tell the audience a little bit about the different chapters? Like what? Yes, are the yeah, <laughs> absolutely. More than happy to. Yeah. So um, when I was, by the way, when I was reading those science papers, it took me, it took me a good month to sort of get my head around the terminology, 
understand yeah. the different types of um research that can that you know that's available that's out there so yeah my aim was to be able to decipher it and make it digestible for people and easy to understand and easy to read and yes. um, that was like a real a real um big thing for me to, to, to do for everybody when I wrote this book um it's an art form it's not everyone aw. can do that you know a lot aw. of a lot of scientists are so they get into this mindset of like they they talk like a different language almost and you're like you have to break it down to people yeah so that yeah. we can understand yeah. it so yeah it's a service that you've done <laughs> yeah oh thank you Cheryl it's really sweet um so in terms of the context of the book we've got number one all about arthritis chapter one um, so like I said earlier, that's everything to do with all the different types of arthritis, how to spot the symptoms and um, the types of medicines that you can be on as well. Um, chapter two is anti-inflammatory essentials. So this research is around everything and anything that I could find that had enough research behind it to, you know, to state that it is anti-inflammatory and it's good for you and it's good in the body. And it's the same with chapter three. So again, research around things that do or could trigger inflammation. So it's called avoiding inflammation. So we've already discussed one of them, which is processed foods. Um, but again, it's uh, and alcohol and smoking. It's, 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 it's all the things we kind of already know about, but just saying them again. Um, chapter four is putting a plan in place. So I know at the start of the podcast, you said about um, being a chef and how, uh, you know, my food is all the rest of it. But actually, I did not know where to start, you know, what to do. I was terrible at cooking, which I talk about in here. I was really not good at cooking. My mum and my sister will, will definitely vouch for that. So <laughs> chapter four is getting your kitchen set up and sort of the things that you need in the cupboard, like dry spices and um, tin things and things that are easy to grab and ready, that, ready there to make your recipes. Chapter five is your recipe. So your 65 tried and true recipes. Got everything from breakfast, small plates, large plates, desserts, snacks and treats, drinks, juices and smoothies, sauces, sides and dips. Chapter six is pain management. Um, so I actually recruited a gentleman called Steve Haynes for this chapter and he contributed to it. Um, and he's written called, a book called Pain is Strange. Um, so he contributed that, to that chapter and it's all about how pain manifests in the body and how it's linked with inflammation. Um, chapter seven is called make, make a move. So that's all about exercise and well-being and fitness and um, actively autoimmune. So Zoe McKenzie, she is a physiotherapist and she's very popular on Instagram. If, you, if you've seen her, she's brilliant at what she yes. does. So she contributed to that chapter. Um, oh, yeah. And then chapter eight is rest and sleep. So that's all about how important sleep is, getting a good night's sleep and how it can help your, your Im immunity um, and your overall well-being. And then chapter nine is, is be kind to your mind, because as you'll know, living with a chronic condition can take, really can take its toll on you, on you mentally um, and physically. So that's sort of things that you can do to help yourself um, manage that. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the book. That's everything that's in Beat Arthritis Naturally. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. And I'm anticipating one of the questions might be, you know, a lot of people are on different diets. So let's say like, I am gluten-free, even though it hasn't affected my rheumatoid arthritis, it makes my stomach feel a lot better. Yeah. Um, so like I, I have kind of bloating issues like related to the gastroparesis. So when I went gluten-free, that got so much better, but didn't really affect my arthritis. But some people find that gluten-free really helps them. Are there like, wait, and I, I just got the digital copy of the book. Sorry. Uh, I no, no, it's, so good. But no, it's so good. But is it something that people can adapt the recipes for like different you know, diet. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so on um, each recipe, you've got little sort of like icon, icon things or letters um, and V for vegan, V E G for vegetarian, um, D F for dairy free and G F for gluten free. Um, so you can spot which recipes, if you are gluten free, you can spot those straight away. Most of them um, are gluten free. In, in fact, probably near enough, all of them are gluten free um, and they're heavily plant-based. And if they aren't plant-based, then there's the plant alternative um, to the recipe um, because I'm I'm so plant-based. I mean, uh, I have fish and I have chicken, but I probably have chicken once or twice a month, um, fish probably once a week, if that. Um, the rest of it is very, yeah, very heavily plant-based. Um, and Dr. Jenna Mitchell says you should get at least 30 plant-based foods a week for your gut health. 
um Mm -hmm. so yeah it's trying to get all of that in (laughs) yeah that's great it's so great to give people a place to just get started like you said you know it can be so overwhelming trying to do it on your own yeah 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 I I know it's been out for a while in the UK and it's about to come out in the U S but what have some of the responses been like so far? Like you said earlier, a lot of people have contacted you saying that like just your diagnosis story resonated, but, um, have you gotten any good feedback about just, you know, how people feel about the book? Uh, this time to brag. It's a brag time. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks Joe. Um, Yes, you know what? I have had some lovely feedback, some really heartwarming feedback um, from people who have who have read *Be Self Directed Naturally*, and a lot of people saying that it it's the book that they wish that they'd had when they first got arthritis, which is exactly what I wanted it to be and to do for people. Um, I've had feedback on some recipes as well. Some people have messaged with photos of of their cooking or or messages saying, "Oh, I've I cooked your pancakes for my five year old. She loves them. That's really sweet." Um, but then I've also had people comment on, on Amazon, there's a couple of Amazon reviews. Yeah. That I've looked at and gone, oh, wow. Um, there was one lady who said that she started doing the things in the book and, um, she found relief from her frozen shoulder, which is just amazing. Um, another lady who started beat off rest naturally stuff in December, um, last year. And she's commented on Amazon recently and said, you know, ever since doing it, I've been feeling so, so much better. I was going to have a, you know, a hip replacement. Actually, it's already feeling, starting to feel so much better. I don't think I'll have it. Um, you know, like something like that. Yeah, it's really amazing stuff that people are coming back with and just saying that it's making them feel good. And, and, and you know, what? that's exactly why I wrote it. That's exactly what I'm here to do. Um, I just want to help as many people as possible. Um, because when I was feeling so alone, so down and just did not know where to turn I just I just didn't know what to do and so this is this is the book that I hope will give people that lifeline um even if what they take from it is just having green tea instead of instead of five coffees you know (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) whatever it is if it's small if it helps you know yeah it was so interesting because I started working with a registered dietitian this year which is something I hadn't done in a long time and she was like I was telling her I'm really sensitive to beans. Like, you know, and they make, again, a lot of things make me bloated, sadly. Um, And, but she was like, you know, will you have coffee in the morning? I'm like, yeah, yeah, coffee's fine. And she goes, Cheryl, coffee's, it's a bean. I was like, gosh, (laughs) it hadn't even occurred to me. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh, yeah, Like in my mind, I was totally good at avoiding like legumes and beans otherwise, Mm -hmm. but like not coffee. So I've started doing the green tea instead of coffee, but sometimes still, anyway, I'm, I'm on a journey. I think, I think the food, food can be really stressful for people. So I'm glad that your book is addressing, like, you know, it's very, like you said, holistic, you're talking about sleep and about stress and about, you know, um, exercise and food. And that I think my advice, no one's asking me, but I'm giving it is always like, look at, cause food has been very stressful for me because of my pre-existing GI issues. Like mm-hmm. I had a reflux since I was, you know, like a teenager. That was like the first kind of thing I ever got diagnosed with is just acid reflux. But, um, and, and so I kind of had some fear around food for a while. Right. Cause I'm like, certain foods are bad and certain foods are good. Yeah, and and yeah. so I think holding it with like approaching like diets, uh, dietary or nutrition intervention for arthritis. For me, it, I recommend, or kind of not recommend, but I tell, I encourage people to approach it with a kind of like a curiosity, like, let's see, let's, instead of like a maniacal, like I have to eat this and, or, yeah, or, you know, yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And I think, as I said earlier, what works for one person might not work for another and it is about finding it out for yourself but also that yeah it is that holistic approach and and, um don't be too stressed if you can't eat perfectly every day because that's not achievable so also don't set yourself up for failure you know you've got to be kind to yourself as well um you know so I would also emphasize that too because hey do you know what sometimes sometimes you can't do it all so you know you've got yeah you've really got to be kind to yourself in that way um, I actually talk about like an 8 to 20 approach. And so, you know, if if I'm good 80% of the time, that 20% doesn't make too much of a difference. So, you know, if I want to, you know, enjoy a, a night out with my friends and I don't get home till, you know, two hours past my bedtime, which would actually affect me pain-wise and tiredness-wise and everything else, I just go, okay, well, okay, that's just this week, that's fine. 
um and it's the same with food and everything else it's, it's about how getting you know getting that balance right and um yeah being kind to yourself um, yeah I, yeah. I love that. And I just think that yeah, too many people in the beginning stages, they get very wrapped up in like finding the solution, the one diet mm-hmm. or like, oh, that worked for her. So it must work for me. And, and so, yeah, I am glad I'm, I'm glad that your resource is really like, you know, approach this knowing that what works for one might not work for another. Maybe you'll try yeah, the vegetarian version and you're still kind of feeling inflamed maybe then try the vegan version. Maybe that'll help you feel better. Or maybe try some, you know, giving some protein. Maybe you need more protein. You know, there's just, it's a constant kind of up. And I've, I've definitely like started enjoying, you know, food more now that I do know, okay, here are some of my reliable, you know, triggers. Mm -hmm. Like, like, you know, I, a lot of times people think of the food as like, okay, I want to make the bad stuff go away, like make the pain go away. Cause maybe there's a food that's triggering pain, but I also think of it as you can think of it. This is like a reinforcement schedule thing from like behavioral psychology. It's like, do you want to make a bad thing go away? Or do you want to make a good thing occur? Right. Yeah. So like, yeah. Isn't absolutely. that interesting? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So you're, yeah. You're focus like, on the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Focus on like giving yourself a positive benefit of food. Like this will give me more energy. Like I know Jennifer, who's like chronic pain nutritionist, she talks a lot about like making sure you give yourself some, you know, healthy fats and, 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 and stuff in the, in a complex carbohydrate in the morning to give energy, as opposed to saying, oh, don't have the bad food. That's going to make you have yeah, pain, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think you know, when I first started this journey, it was such a huge overhaul on my diet and what I was actually doing that I did feel a little bit like a fish out of water. I felt like, oh God, like, you know, I can't have this. I can't have that. You know, that's going to make me ill. That's going to make me have more pain. That's going to make me. And then just as you just said that, I was like, gosh, I, then I really did start to turn my, turn my thinking around because I started to feel better. And I was like, wait, if I eat more of this, I'm going to feel like this. And if I eat more of this, I'm going to feel like this. And it started to make me feel more encouraged um so yeah if you think of it as with you nourishing yourself and taking care of yourself that is the best way to look at it rather than this is changing my life and it's and you know spoiling you know my enjoyment no see it as it's it's giving you enjoyment because it's making you feel good (laughs) I love Um, that yeah that is that's just kind of how my brain works like I guess there's people that are seeking pleasure versus avoiding pain (laughs) yeah I guess we all go through phases of both but but yeah definitely yeah absolutely well, and the other just kind of follow-up question just about the, I'm curious about what it was like to write a book. Cause I know a lot of patients, you know, including myself, it's like, oh, one day I want to write a book, you know, like, and I, it's a very mystical process in my head of like, how do you actually write a book? Like, is it just, <laughs> you just write it? And then like, how, how did the process go for you? So gosh, well, I don't know where to start. I could start with the crowdfunding campaign that I did. So I, um, actually I could go even further back than that. I was on holiday, I was on holiday with my friend um, and we were chatting, we went to a yoga class, um, sort of like a meditation mindfulness thing for my birthday, bless her. And there was a lady sat there at, at, the, at the vegan brunch after and um, she was talking about how she published a book. And I previously said to my friend, Rachel, I talk about this in the book as well, in my acknowledgements, I previously said to Rachel, oh, do you know what, maybe, maybe I could one day write a book, you know, for arthritis foodie and it could help people. And I sort of quietly said it to her um, and to close friends and family. And um, anyway, we were sat around this table and this girl called Jacqueline starts talking about how she's published a book, how it's going really well. Um, she's American. Uh, and she was just like, yeah, it's just an amazing experience. And I was sat there going, oh my God, that's so cool. Like, you know, I want to do that. Um, and then my friend Rachel sort of did it for me. And she was like, Emily wants to write a book. <laughs> at the table <laughs> you have good friends like a lot of these super stories sweet. are like your friend was really nice to you yeah, yeah super sweet yeah and she was like my friend Emily wants to write a book Emily tell her about your book idea <laughs> um so I did and then Jacqueline was like oh I used this thing called Publishizer and I crowdfunded for my book and then off the back of that they pitch you to publishers and then publishers get in touch with you um, and it sort of raises awareness, shows that people are interested in your idea and your brand or, you know, your book, et cetera. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, maybe I'll try that. So um, off the back of that, I set up a publishizer campaign um, and crowdfunded for the book. So anyone who like pre-ordered back then 
I was sending them copies only just <laughs> back last year. Um, so they had to wait a couple of years for it. Um, but yeah, off the back of that, I sort of, yeah, got uh, different reach outs from different publishers. And I was like, oh gosh, I, I don't know where to take this and who to go with. And, and then sort of organically um, bumped into Doctor's Kitchen um and then he was like oh Emily I've heard about what you're doing and I sort of explained about what I was doing um and then he put me in touch with one of his contacts and then it sort of went from there but if I hadn't done the crowdfunding and sort of shown that there was an interest then it would have been a lot harder to pitch my book um so then I pitched my book um to the editor of Yellow Kite and she basically took a chance on me because at that point I've not even written anything <laughs> all wow. I'd done was was the pitch um and she was yeah she sort of had a lot of confidence in me and said Emily I think I think there's really something here and you could help a lot of people and you know we're behind you which 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 was great so then uh so then yeah I started started writing it I spent my weekends in the library researching um and starting to put a skeletal plan together for the chapters um yeah it, I mean yeah it was it was it was a crazy time because also then the pandemic hit <laughs> um uh so because it was yeah March 2020 that um I got my yeah I got my final sign off and of the offer letter uh, oh my gosh then, March 2020 yeah wow. yeah so I pitched my book in January 20 January 2020 yeah no it was just wow. before Christmas it was Christmas 2019 that I pitched my book to her discussions yeah. sort of January February and then we finally got the offer letter in March 2020 and the pandemic hit and I was like oh my god is this still gonna end up happening um wow. but I ended up going on furlough so what it meant by that was I could use that time to write my book and not worry about rent and everything like that I was very 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 lucky and very very grateful for that time um so I could spend my days writing the book basically during lockdown <laughs> um yeah. when nothing was open and um, I also couldn't go out because I was shielding um so it actually gave me a lot of purpose when I couldn't yeah when the whole world was crumbling basically um yeah. quite wow. a unique a unique story of how I how I got my book written and yeah became an author but yeah <laughs> no um, that's I'm I'm sure everyone listening or most people listening are really in, inspired by that you know and I I actually didn't know you'd only had arthritis or I'd forgotten if I knew at one point that you'd only you've had it for eight years yeah now yeah so you know it's like you don't you know I mean that is a long time to some people but it's also like you learn a lot you know every year you, that you have so it much. yeah it's, yeah especially if you're actively like researching and you know get it, trying out different things on your own body you know so hopefully that's also inspiring to people to realize like oh wow if I just got diagnosed like maybe I'll you know be in like a be like a leader in the arthritis community you know what I mean at some point yeah, like that's yeah, like yeah. really 100%, exciting 100 percent. you know it's and and it's it's something that I'm so passionate about and I think passion takes you a long way it just does because when you care about something and you and you want to help people it just you know yeah I think that that also is something to be said said for yeah yeah. Um, and like some people aren't comfortable with writing or maybe don't want to share on social media, but there's so many different ways you can be like actively engaged in, yeah. you know, taking your, turning your pain into your purpose, you know, and making yeah, definitely, from definitely. It. Even if it's like joining, joining community, community online and, and helping support groups and commenting and helping people that way, you know, whatever it is, even if it's small, it, it actually does give you a lot of joy as well to sort of, yeah, like you said, turn your, your pain in, into purpose but um yeah the book the final manuscript was so long it was like wow. ninety thousand words <laughs> um I did so much research like more than I actually ended up going wow. in the book it was too much it was too much um and had to sort of edit it edit it and yeah and then ended up ended up with the book that it is now but yeah so yeah it was it was a really unique and yeah exciting journey and I'm very very grateful and um but yeah definitely don't give up on on if you want to be an author or you you know if you've got an idea don't give up on it and just keep going because you know it, it will happen hopefully for you one day um I know there's um is it what's it um I forgot her name is it Morgan Harper Nichols I don't remember oh no sorry maybe oh, skip okay. that bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh my free recall memory oh. is just dismal yeah yeah I'm trying 
there's a, basically there's a writer of knots and crosses and she was on she was on tv and she was saying that she she pitched her book for years for years and it took hundreds and hundreds of like it took hundreds of pictures for her to finally get the book published oh, right you know and it, you hear these stories of books you know being ready but publishers not taking them on but then one day someone will take that chance on you so that you know keep that's going. <laughs> yeah. Keep going. Yeah. No, that's great. I feel like you're paying it forward that the woman that inspired you to wrote it, write your book. It's like, now I'm like, Oh, I feel inspired to do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's just yeah. so, yeah, <laughs> I, I have a problem with just wanting to do too many things though. So part of my, part of my manage illness management is being like, deep breath, like one thing at a time, like don't overcommit (laughs) yourself. You know, you're doing a podcast and you're teaching a support group and an online course and you're doing video. Oh my gosh. "Ah, And you have a family. Yeah. And and I have a family. family. (laughs) My little puppy. Yeah. No, but no, thank you. This is so, so helpful. And you know, one of my favorite questions to ask anyone who comes on the podcast um, is, and again, just speaking as a patient is what, what words of encouragement or advice generally speaking, not medical advice, do you have for <laughs> newly, someone newly diagnosed who might be in that state that you described so beautifully earlier mm-hmm. of just that, like, I don't know what just happened and what to do and yeah. I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. yeah. So the first thing I would say is take a deep breath, be kind to yourself. You always have to be kind to yourself and just know that you're not going to know everything at once and it's going to take some time. Um, don't try and absorb everything yeah if you absorb all these different things from different support groups from different if you're googling loads of different things it can feel overwhelming and also it can make you feel really sad about about having the diagnosis um allow yourself that time to be sad be kind to yourself um and just know that it is going to take is going to take time and you're not going to know everything overnight um and that you are the best advocate for your health you know your body you know who you are, you know what it's like to live in your body every day. Nobody else does. Nobody else knows. Nobody else knows but you. So therefore, you really have to advocate for yourself. That's what I would say. So if you're on a medication and the rheumatologist is like, you know what, Um, this has worked for so many people. I think it's going to work for you. But if it's not working for you, that's okay. You know, I think it's going, I know, I know my own body. I know my own mind and I know how I'm feeling um this is not medical advice but I'm just saying yeah yeah when you're in those spaces it can feel like um you aren't in control which is what I say in this book it feels like you aren't in control but there are little ways that you can have control of your of your life you know what you eat what exercise you do um the sleep you have you know all of that kind of stuff so um yeah. being the best advocate you can for your own health is is another bit of advice that was quite a lot no that's <laughs> but, um, that's great it's helpful I, I think it is and I think what you said about control is something I've been thinking about a lot lately I recently just like drew out on a post-it note like kind of three circles they're not like a Venn diagram but it's like a little circle and then a bigger circle around it and then the biggest mm. circle and it's like there's the middle part, the small circle is like things I can control, like for sure control. Mm -hmm, And then mm -hmm. the outer circle is like things I for sure can't control. And then the middle one is like messy middle, you know, gray area, right? It's like (laughs) gray area. Yeah. I can control like when I go into my bed, you know, and have my wind down routine, Mm -hmm, I can't mm -hmm. necessarily, I can, I can control like maybe if I listen to calming music or something, but I can't mm-hmm. actually like make my brain go to sleep that I know yeah. of maybe people who are hypnotists yeah. can, you know, but so it's like <laughs> separating, like, or I can control like the words I say, like someone asked me the other day, how do you make other people understand your arthritis? And I was like, well, you have to separate what you can control and what you can't yeah. you can control the yeah. words you say, how, how often you say them, the resources you direct people to, but you cannot control their brain understanding so no. you can't no you someone, can't know no. you know so no. I think yeah it's so helpful to have resources to help us figure out sort through and sift through is this controllable or not you know what is it something I can let kind of not let go of but maybe work around like definitely you know so definitely. sorry that's my <laughs> I've been kind of obsessing <laughs> over this like visual no, 100% because, yeah no 100% because I think as well when you live with arthritis there's always no matter how long you're in a remission for or how long it is till your next remission or whatever, you just don't know 
what's going to happen next so that can feel really like you're out of you know like what happened to me I thought I was getting better and then I didn't and then you know it went somewhere else and then it, it, it's it's completely up and down and tipsy-turvy and that kind of stuff you've just got to accept that that's what arthritis is and yeah. you'll have flare-ups you'll have good days and bad days even now there are certain days that have way more pain than I do on others you know mm-hmm. but I live with that chronic pain I'm not I'm not not in pain there's just days where it's higher than and lower than others and you know um and it's managing that so I think yeah it's it's, it's so important to know that you can't control everything um but just take ownership of the little things that you maybe can you know <laughs> it's so empowering it's like I again I it's almost like I think of it as like a paradox that it's of course it's empowering to know what you can't control. Like I can control what I put in my kitchen and like how I cook it and you know yeah. how much of it I eat, but I can't necessarily control like if my body is like has a reaction to like bell peppers mm. or whatever. Um, yeah. But also yeah. like also from the standpoint of um like the acceptance piece, you would think, oh, but then like accepting the things you can't control must be like depressing or like, but it Mm -hmm. actually is empowering to be like, yeah, not just say I accept these things, but like, I have the tools to cope with the things I can't control, like the serenity prayer, you know, give me Mm -hmm. the courage to accept the things I cannot change and um, the wisdom Mm -hmm. to know the difference. You know, I just realized, okay, that that? (laughs) that overlapping circle that I thought I created is not new. Like, (laughs) it's just like, we're all just kind of trying to make sense of these diseases and how to live with them and how to, you know, live a good life. And I think it is empowering to say that like, yeah, some days, I might, and I hear this a lot. You probably hear this too. I did everything right. And I still didn't feel good. Yeah, I still day. didn't feel good. Yeah. 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 Saying, that okay. happens. That happens. And you just go, okay, today's a bad day, but tomorrow's a new one. And yeah. we start again and, and you just, yeah, you've got to, you've got to be kind to yourself. I've said that more than once, but you know, you can really feel like, uh, hating your body like beating, beating yourself yes. up about not feeling good. You know, I used to look at my hands and go, oh, I just want a hand transplant. I just want someone. I thought of that, but I thought about it my whole body. <laughs> oh, that was when I was having stomach was issues. Main... And yeah, I was just oh. like, can I just have a head? Tra- can I transplant yeah, my just... head to someone else's body? <laughs> I'm sort of like going, and sort of like almost hating your own body, but actually yeah, you've so got to love it because you only got one. Um, and, you know, I know, yeah, it's it's hard to, think of that but you've just got to make living in your body the best place to be no matter what that is and just accepting that some days it won't be the best place to be but it's not going to always be like that um yeah, yeah. the future is unknowable and yeah this is the body that you get like you know yeah. I could spend all my life wishing her to be different you know but this is the only life I get as far as I yeah, my philosophy exactly. of life is there's no afterlife in, in my knowledge so you know I don't or if there is I don't have any control over that so I'm just going to focus on what I know is that yeah, this is in the life. present moment you know, yeah we're yeah. very wise <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad we this try. is being we recorded try. this is I'm so glad this is recorded well no thank you so Aww. much I really I really appreciate it and just I'm going to put all your links um online or on this Amazing. show notes but can you uh let everyone know where they what yeah your handle of is course again? of course so my handle's at arthritis foodie that's f-o-o-d-i-e and the book is Beat Arthritis Naturally. It's out in the UK already. It's available. Available. <laughs> yes. It's available um, globally on Book Depository, but it's out in the US. I've got my little US flag <laughs> yeah. on the on the fifteenth of March, um, twenty twenty two. Is out, which is next week actually. Um, it's out in the US. So yeah, uh, please buy it if you do. Let me know how you get on with it and if you like it or not. Um, but yeah, and also if you don't want to buy it, don't buy it. Um, but yeah, that's true. <laughs> but it's, yeah. it's resource. It's a resource if you want it. So yeah, yeah. I love it. I'm <laughs> I, I'm so glad you took the time to come on the podcast. I know you're very busy right now. You know, promoting the book, and you have a job on top of that. It's just, I mean, it's a lot. Yeah. it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I'm, I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> I'm very very happy to be on this podcast, Cheryl, and I love all of the work that you do. I think you're a brilliant advocate for everybody living with arthritis and yeah thank you you're wonderful so I'm so glad to be here (laughs) yeah no and every time someone says oh social media you know oh that's not good for patients they just they just 
give each other misinformation. I'm always like, you know, there's so many wonderful people I would never have met if it wasn't for yes. social media. Oh so my gosh, many. absolutely. That make you feel less alone and make you feel normal. Yes. And yeah, or yeah, even like, 100%. you know, Dr. Micah, you who I know did, you, you know, medically reviewed yeah. your book. He was on the, I had him on the podcast, you know, getting, oh, tapping into his wisdom and having him share his story. And, you know, so anyway, I'm just, yeah, I'm, oh. I feel very lucky that social media has led me to so many um, you know, wonderful people who I learned so much from. And so, um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. thank you again. Oh, thank you so much, Cheryl, for having me. <laughs> I'm just.